Hello everyone and welcome to what is hopefully the last episode of the Future Tech Tree Analysis series. Um, for the last episode we'll be looking at the French and Italian Air Forces, who um, don't have their own tech trees and actually didn't get any aircraft at all. Um, probably my own, only real big disappointment. I um, was kind of looking some of the, forward to, to some of the Italian aircraft such as the ME205, the um, Piaggio P108, um, and some French aircraft. Um, I'm, I'm not as familiar with the French aircraft, but I know they had some quite big bombers. They had some okay fighter aircraft. We have got the D510, um, or is it D520 in game, but unfortunately it's a um, gift aircraft, which you can only get from buying a special pack. So they don't really have any presence within the game. And, um, this episode is just to sort of inform people on what aircraft they could have had, um, give people ideas if they're thinking of doing their own tech tree episodes or going on the forum stars for aircraft, um, you know, if it helps people, this video will have done its job. So, first of all, we'll get started with the, um, probably with the Italians, because they've already got a few aircraft, so their list will probably be a bit smaller than the French, maybe, I mean, the French have, of course, surrendered in 1940, so that's kind of Curb's development of their tech tree a little bit. Um, they probably get quite a few like Allied aircraft, like um, British and American aircraft, to the mid tiers, and then they sort of pick up again for the higher tiers because as the um, France was liberated and they started putting out more designs. I think they were actually designing some aircraft during the occupation, but obviously couldn't produce them. Um, and the Italians obviously stayed in the war a bit longer, but because they surrendered in or switched sides in 1943. Um, that'll sort of curtail um, development from 43 to about 45, and then once they start get to their event again, they'll probably get some more aircraft. But um, enough of me um, babbling, let's get started with the Italians. Now the first plane we'll look at is the Reggie Arni RE2005 Sagittario, um, my apologies if I mispronounced that. Um, but there was a few um, aircraft in the RE2000 series, um, this is obviously the 2005 series. Um, now this is um, described in my book as one of the best um, air fighters produced in Italy during World War II. And um, it has an impressive speed, 391 miles an hour at 7,000 metres. Um, it could climb to 2,000 metres in 1.58 minutes, so quite good climber, quite fast. And it had a um, armament of three 20mm cannons and two 12.7mm um, machine guns, and could carry 630 kilograms worth of bombs. Now, that would be quite good for the Italians, because at the moment, uh, I think the best sort of armament they get is a few machine guns. To, um, the MC202, two 12.7mm machine guns and a 7.7mm machine gun, which obviously is okay, but it's, um, for a tier. Two. I mean, well, it's good for tier two, but that's where it ends. That's the best they get. Um, this could probably go on, um, possibly tier three. Um, possibly, yeah, possibly high tier two, low tier three. It would just help boost the Italians up a little bit. I mean, these planes were quite good. I think the Germans actually um used a lot of them after the um Italians um surrendered and sort of switched to the Allies. Um, I've got listed on. Um, the Wikipedia that, that some were actually still operating in December 1944. So obviously they were, must have been quite good for the um, Germans to still be using them. I mean, obviously they needed as many aircraft as they could get then, but um, yeah, they still kept using them. Um, only 48 of these were made and delivered before the armistice. So um, obviously, obviously they weren't built in that great numbers. I've actually got it listed as possible. My book actually says some of them were flying above Berlin, so possibly they were used as bomber interceptors as well. I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, I think this would be a good aircraft to, for the Italians. Um, so yeah, definitely a good choice from, for the Italians, in my opinion. Now the next aircraft we're looking at is the Fiat G55 Centauro. I've possibly got that wrong. Um, hopefully not. But um, again, also described as one of the best fighter aircraft Italy produced. Um, seems that the MC-205 is also described as one of the best. Oh, maybe they were all just very good aircraft. But um, before I get sidetracked, um, this one was capable of 391 miles an hour, 
could climb to um, 6,000 metres in 7 minutes, 12 seconds. And it was armed with one 20mm Mauser MG151. So a German cannon. Two similar wing-mounted cannon, so three cannon. And two fuselage-mounted 12.7mm machine guns. And it could carry 260 kilogram bombs on under the wing. So again, another fast aircraft. Um, possibly... Um, now, where it would go tiering battle rating wise, probably similar to the RE 2005, probably high tier t 2, low tier 3, or possibly higher tier 3. Um, it could possibly, because it has quite similar armament to, um, well, actually more armament than some of the BF 109Gs, and it has um, similar speeds. Um, it was also, I think I've got, if I'm reading this right, it was also considered by, um, it was an it was analysed by the Luftwaffe. They for them they wanted to possibly build the aircraft themselves with the DB six oh three engines. Um now in the end they decided not to um, because the G five five required fifteen thousand man hours to produce. While a um uh, well they could get it down to nine thousand possibly, but a BF one oh nine only took five thousand. And in the end they used the D B six oh three engines in the TA one five two C, um which unless I'm for um, mistaken, we should be getting in um, War Thunder soonish. Um, so obviously the Germans felt it was quite good. Um, and yeah, I think it would again it would be another good choice for an Italian fighter to be added into the game. Now this next aircraft is the MC two hundred five Veltro, um, also known as the Greyhound. Now um, my book actually has this listed the second best fighter Italy produced after the G fifty five. So I'm guessing if this book is right, it goes. Um, G55 MC205 RE2005, if this book is correct. But um, it could reach speeds of up to, I believe, 398 miles an hour. So quite a bit faster than the other ones, I believe. Um, or about, or faster than the RE2005 at least. Um, so, and it was armed with two 12.7mm machine guns and two 7.7mm machine guns, but later models had 20mm cannons in, to replace the 7.7mm machine guns. Now again, um, only a few of these were produced. Um, 66 were produced, 6 were put into service. The Germans um, produced another 20, or another 20 were manufactured under German supervision. So again, um, could be a good choice for um, the, the Italians. Uh, Possibly could it could probably again it would probably be a tier low high tier two low tier three or possibly middle tier three again it has a decent amount of armament quite good speed um not too sure about the maneuverability but um yeah I, I mean I have good um I'm able to use the MC two O T two in game so this with a more powerful engine the DB six O five should be Quite easy to use and quite a good aircraft, and I think it would again it'd be a good choice for the Italians to um, have in game. Now the next aircraft we're looking at is the Breeder BA65. Now this aircraft wasn't that great, but not awful. But it wasn't exactly the best aircraft ever. Um, it was armed with two 12.7 mm machine guns and two 7.7 mm machine guns, and could carry up to 300 kilograms of bombs in the fuselage, or 200 kilograms of bombs on the Underwing racks. Um, I've got a picture of it um, with a turret. I'm just trying to see if there's any more information on it. Um, I can't find any information on the turret. Um, seems not all of them really use the turret. Maybe it was a one off um, version with the turret. I don't know. It wasn't commonly used. I'm not entirely sure. But um, yeah, it wasn't. It could go 267 miles per hour as a maximum speed. Um, so quite slow. But reasonably well armed. I don't know how much armour it has. Um, I think Italy does kind of need a single seat bomber, because um, I think or a single engine bomber. Most nations do have them, because um, Russia's got their R twos and Su twos. I don't think Britain has one actually. Um, but I don't think Britain really used them particularly. Japan has its um, D three A ones. Um, it's America. Germany's got its Stukas and America's got um you know its SBDs and torpedo and its um Dauntless yeah Dauntless and the Avengers okay they were carrier aircraft but um 
you know, Italy doesn't really have anything that sort of fulfills that role. And I think this would be probably a good candidate for it. Now, the next aircraft on our list is the Fiat BR-20, um, which was used um, during the Spanish Civil War and up to World War II. Um, it was overshadowed by the SM-79 Sparaferio that we have in game, um, for a few reasons, like having more, because it had more engines, the um, Sparaferio was faster, it did better in aerial races, j just sort of, sort of things like that. Um, now, with stats, um, for the, I've got for the BR-20M, to go 273 miles an hour, carry 1,600 kilograms or 3,500 pounds of bombs, and um, was armed with three 12.7mm machine guns. Um, there was a few other variants. There was an experimental variant as a, with a gunship has a, with a 37mm cannon in the nose. Um, another one, there was another one, a radio commanded unmanned plane with explosives, but um, that was never used. So, um, not exactly the best plane, I suppose, but um, again, Italy doesn't really have any twin engine bombers. It has one, the SM79B, but um, and it has got a lot of spare Averios. Um, if I'm honest, it probably doesn't need that many tactical bombers, but just to sort of cover all of the um aircraft that could be added, I thought I'd, thought I'd talk about this one quickly. Well, before I go on to the next aircraft quickly, um. I should just mention Japan also had some of these. I believe they ordered them from um, Italy, and they were used um, during the war against China. Um, a few of them were actually used in Kalking Gol, which was the um, battle between the Japanese and the Soviet Union um, on the Mon Mongolian-Manchurian border, and it was sort of replaced about that time. Um, it was given an Allied reporting name, Ruth. Um, obviously, they seemed to not get get that it had been taken out of service, perhaps, but. Um, so it could be used as a maybe um, premium aircraft for the Japanese as well. Um, just thought I'd put that out there before I went on to the next aircraft. We've also got the Kant Z or K Kant Z1007. Um, again, another medium bomber, three-engine bomber. Don't really think Italy needs any more three-engine bombers, but there's a very large um, thread on the forums with a lot of votes for it to be put in. So I better cover it um, just to be sure. Um, it's got listed here as a maximum speed of 285 miles an hour. Could carry 1,200 kilograms or 2,500 pounds of bombs internally, 1,000 kilograms or 2,000 pounds externally and under wing hardpoints, or combined load 2,200 kilograms or 5,000 pounds internally and on external hardpoints. Could also carry two torpedoes. Was armed with two 7.7 mm machine guns and two 12.7 mm machine guns. Um, seems like a reasonably good aircraft. Um, like I said, I'm not sure this is the priority for Italian aircraft, but again, it would be a very good aircraft to have in the game, and so, you know, it's always best to cover all of them. Almost at the end of the Italian aircraft, um, we've got the Kant Z506B Aero next, um, largest seaplane to get to be given widespread operational service during World War II. Although my book says the JU 523M might they claim to this achievement, um, this isn't to be confused with the BV 2222, which is the largest flying boat to be given operational service for large scale production or production status. Um, now, this was a seaplane, obviously, um, could go 217 miles an hour, armed with one 12.7mm machine gun, three 7.7mm machine guns, in two beam and one ventral position, the 12.7mm machine guns in the dorsal position, plus a bomb load of 1,200 kilograms or 2,600 pounds, or one 800 kilogram torpedo. So again, this would be quite good for Italy and allow them to take part in the floats events. I don't think they had any like fightery type um, float planes like like the HE-51 or the um, O2SU. But again, it would be a good addition for Italy. Um, again, another free engine plane, possibly not the biggest priority, but because it's a seaplane, I think it could possibly be um, worth looking at. Now, this next aircraft is one that doesn't get talked about enough, in my opinion. Um, you may not recognise it. It's the Piaggio P108, a four-engine Italian bomber. First flew on 24th of November 1939, so about the same time as the Heinkel 177. Um, 
and like I said, it was a four-engine bomber. Um, people don't people sort of assume the Italians didn't build um, all that great aircraft, but they were building four-engine bombers before the war, or just after the war had started. Um, they never built that many of them. They weren't that great a success. I, if I'm remembering correctly, I think one of Mussolini's sons was actually killed while serving on one of these. Um, I'll try and find out if that's true. Um, it was armed with up to six, so 12.7 millimeter machine guns. And it could have um, another two 12.7 millimeter machine guns on the outer engine gondolas. And could carry an, an internal payload of three and a half thousand kilograms. So, very, quite a lot of armament. Um, that's actually quite similar to the American B-17s in armament. Um, max speed was, um, just trying to find it now, 267 miles an hour. So, again, quite fast. Um, well, maybe not the fastest plane in the world, but a decent speed. Um, I think this would be a very good aircraft um, to have in this um, in the game, because um, well, the Axis powers don't really have four-engine aircraft at the moment. We're getting the Heinkel 177, which is a, it's technically a four-engine aircraft, but it still has two propellers. The, the only uh, Axis power that actually has them is, ironically, Japan, the one nation that well, we didn't really use them in the war, as far as I can tell. Um, I think they were very little used, mainly relying on the twin-engine bombers. So for Italy to have a four-engine aircraft would be good, not just for Italy, but for the Axis powers as a whole. Um, I've just found out um, Bruno Mussolini was um, killed while we flying one of these um, planes. So um, that could possibly explain why it wasn't produced in such great numbers. Only something like 30 to 35. And only 24 of them were bombers. They were also used as transport um, aircraft. Um, including at Stalingrad, I think. So, um, yeah, I think this would be a very good uh, aircraft to add to the game uh, for Italy. And, well, for the game in general. So, having gone through the Italian aircraft, now it's time to check out the French aircraft that could be added. Uh, I'll try and keep this list a bit shorter, because obviously they haven't got their own tech tree, well they haven't got any aircraft um, even in the British or Allied lines other than the one or two um, premium aircraft so I'll just try and outline a few basic aircraft they could get just to sort of get them started off and all that. Now for the French aircraft I'll probably stick with early tier aircraft obviously we don't want to suggest high tier aircraft if um, there's nothing to fill out the early tiers. So we'll start off with the Moran Saulnier, I'll probably mispronounce that, MS-406. Um, France's first fighter with an enclosed cockpit and retractable undercarriage. And it first flew in August 1938, which sounds a bit late, if I'm honest, but um, there we go. Um, could, it was armed with one 20mm cannon uh, firing through the propeller hub and two 7.7mm MAC 1934 machine guns in the wings. It also reached speeds of up to 303 miles an hour, or maximum speed. Now, it was outclassed by the um, BF-109, so obviously, not probably about, it probably maybe be able to go against the BF-109E. Other than that, probably lower tier than, or battle rating than the BF-109s. Um, possibly going against the Heinkel 112s. Um, wasn't really used um, by the Germans after France surrendered, who gave it to their allies. Um, 68 to Finland, Croatia 48, 20 to Bulgaria, Finns 41 or more. Um, yeah, they didn't do all that good. Um, Switzerland also bought the rights to produce them um, and built 82. When this was actually served as a flight instruction aircraft until 1959. So again, not that great an aircraft, but for the lower tiers, I think it could be a good starting point for France. Now the next fighters I'm looking at are the MB-151 and MB-152. Um, they're both um, variants of, um, well they're both the same aircraft but different variants. Um, the MV1, MB-152 being slightly faster. Now um, they both carry two 20mm cannons and two 7.5mm machine guns, or just four 7.5mm machine guns. Now um, apparently these um, weren't delivered in that great numbers. And they're a bit more effective than the last aircraft, the um, MS-406, but um, there weren't enough of them. Uh, they weren't delivered until really the last minute, so the pilots weren't acquainted with them and they didn't do all that well. 
Um, they were used by the Fishy regime afterwards, and when they were occupied, the Wehrmacht gave them to um, Romania, or used them as training aircraft. Um, MB-151 could be slightly lower battle rating than the M-152. Um, the M-152 has a speed of, um, let me find it, 316 miles an hour. So, make um, the 151, which would probably be a bit slower, lower battle rating, maybe the 152 can go against 109s. Again, it would be a good aircraft for the French to have, because um, they should be able to hold their own um, against most of the other aircraft, at lower tiers at least. Quickly moving on to um, bombers, um, we'll try and do one, I'll do one light bomber, one heavy bomber, that way we've, you know, got a decent um, spread of um, bombers. Um, for the light bomber, the one I'm looking at is the BR-693. Now this is um, a twin engine bomber. It could reach speeds of up to 304 miles an hour at um, 5,000 meters. And it was armed with one 20mm cannon in the and two 7.5mm um, machine guns in the nose. A 7.5mm machine gun in the cockpit, another one in the fuselage, and two additional ones in the fixed machine guns in the motor gondolas. And it could have an internal payload of 400 kilograms. So, fairly fast aircraft. Pretty well armed. Um, doesn't carry much of a bomb mode. Um, kind of reminds me of the old 10 in that respect. Obviously not as well armed in cannon either, but, you know, sort of most of its armament is um, based on its... Um, um, cannons and machine guns rather than bomb load. Um, I think it would be quite good for lower tiers. Um, sort of a, it could, because at the moment the Allies have, um, we well got the Americans with their B-25s and A-20s, lots of machine guns, and carries a few bombs, and then you've got the British who, like, sort of rely on their bombs, don't really have any ground attack aircraft. Um, so this would sort of fill in that role, I think. Um, sort of a, Best of both worlds, I suppose. Obviously, not quite as good as um, either in like their specific roles, but um, it would be quite good at just attacking ground targets with its cannon and machine guns. I think. Now, this next aircraft, the Amiot 143, um, looks a bit funny. Um, I actually thought this was a heavy bomber based on this picture, but um, apparently it was a medium bomber. But that bit underneath the um cockpit it kind of reminds me of the gondola on um zeppelins uh, it just looks like a bit of a funny design but um anyway getting on to the stats it could go 183 miles an hour top speed um it could get to 2000 meters in 6.8 minutes so a bit on the slow side um could carry 800 kilograms internally plus another 800 kilograms externally so quite decent bomb load um and it had four 7.5mm machine guns, uh, one each in the nose, dorsal, turret, forward gondola and rear gondola. Um, again, it looks like it would be quite a good start for French bombers perhaps. I mean, maybe it's a bit, um, maybe it's a bit on the heavy side um, bomb-wise. Maybe it would have to be a bit higher tier-wise. Because um, it does seem like it can carry quite a lot of bombs. I think that's actually more than some of the Japanese planes at the moment carry. But um, I think it would be quite good for France. Maybe have it as a tier 2 or 3 aircraft. Uh, probably tier 3 if I'm honest. Or, although the H6K is only tier um, tier 1. That carries quite a big bomb load. That carries about two 800 kilograms bombs. So maybe tier 1 to 3 depending on how you're feeling. I suppose tier 1 or tier 2 would make most sense. Kind of reminds me of the TB3 a little bit. Um, it's a bit faster than the TB3 I think. But... Um, yeah, I think it would be a very good addition for the French Air Force. And, yeah, it would just be an interesting plane in general. I mean, I still can't get over the how it looks with that gondola on the bottom. I swear it looks like they've taken it off of a Zeppelin. So that brings us to the end of the Italian and French tech trees. Um, like I said earlier, this was just meant to be like looking at the basic low tier levels. Also, it would be a bit difficult for... Well, if I start looking at the higher tiers, we'll end up in a massive video... Obviously, some of the nations, such as it's well, Italy and France, are both of limited higher tiers because um, both countries' um, situations at that point in the war. Um, plus, I don't think they ever developed jet engines until, or they didn't develop jet aircraft properly until after the war. The Italians did actually develop one. It was called the Cap 
Caproni Capini N1CC2. Um, it was never actually armed, and apparently it wasn't very good. It used some sort of um, method um, that it was a bit of a dead end in jet design. Um, like I said, it was quite slow. Could only manage about 233 miles an hour. But this this was one of the first jets to fly. Actually, I think it was the second jet after the Germans. So, um. But yeah, the second nation after the Germans, so before Britain and all that. So they could uh, they could have developed them possibly, but they didn't because they partly because the design was a bit of a dead end, and partly because of the war situation. France never developed it because, of course, they were under occupation. They worked on designs, but they never actually couldn't exactly build them um, while while they were being occupied. Um, so, so that would limit them. And I don't want to look too far in the tears, obviously. I can leave that for another episode, um, probably sometime in the future. Um, maybe time to leave the Future Tech Tree series for a while. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed this whole series. It, I know I, um, it took a long time and it was a bit exhausting at times, but I quite enjoyed making it. Um, if you liked it, please leave a like. Um, leave feedback. Um, definitely could use some feedback the next time. Um, they announce the next lot of planes to be announced and I do a series on it or episodes on it. Um, subscribe if you like these sort of videos and well just thank you for watching. Now I'll see you next time.